Well, praise the Lord. Here we are with session 15. And, um, and it had really been going fast. <laughs> and this is, uh, we're going to continue to talk about the uh, knowing to know God intimately. And uh, my name is Jim Caseman. I'm the president and founder of the Association of Faith Church and Ministers. And I'm honored to bring the word to you today. But I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of our partners and friends who support this ministry with their prayers and finances, making it possible for us to take the gospel to the world. And that is awesome. All right. Getting to know God intimately. And, uh, hallelujah. This is session 16, not session 15, for those of you that are keeping track of it. I don't want to lead you astray. <laughs> All right. Now, the five types, types of offerings were the sin offering, the trespass offering, the burnt offering, the meal offering, and the peace offering. Now, these offerings were to be a physical, outward expression of the longings of the inward heart in all the people under the Old Blood Covenant that were seeking a way to communicate with God. And the sin offering and trespassing offering were mandatory offerings. Those first two were mandatory. And they, had, they associated with the sins of the nation and the individual Hebrews. That had to do, the sin offering had to do with their position with God. And the trespassing offering had to do with the, with their life as they were conducting it, and should they should they sin, they're real quick to repent and conf and and offer up the, uh, the sacrifice for that sin. They can be forgiven. So that's mandatory. There's no sense talking about anything else unless you first of all have a relationship with God. The burnt offering, meal offering, and peace offering were spontaneous, voluntary offerings of praise and worship, and so those were. You're, you, you had a free will. You choose. But that was praise and, praise and thanksgiving. And so that would be something, obviously, that we would want to do every day. They were not associated with these last three offerings, the burnt offering and the meal offering and the peace offering, were not associated with the individual's sin, but were part of his worship towards God. Therefore, God was pleased with these voluntary offerings, and he considered them a sweet aroma. Now, the five sacrifices are as follows. And you can read Leviticus. The first seven chapters of Leviticus will help you to explain it in even more detail. And again, the sin offering has to do with my position with God. I inherited the nature to sin from Adam. And in order to approach God, I have to have a sin offering. Now, the trespassing offer deals with my walk with God. I offer it for the sins I've committed against God and others since I've started my walk with God. Now, the sin offering and the trespassing offering is when I express a desire for communion with God. The blood of animals is only a temporary provision to cover any sins. But I've looked forward to the time when the perfect sacrifice to the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, will come and take away my sins and not just cover them, but remit them, cancel them, and, and, and never to remember it again. Now, thirdly, the burnt offering is where I express my readiness for communion with God. It's a voluntary offering of myself. It's complete dedication and surrender to God. And, and, and the skin is the evidence that, uh, of that sacrifice, is the evidence that a sacrifice has been made, and that skin has to be given to the priest. And that's evidence that it was made. All right, so I'm ready to commune with God. Now, the meal offering symbolizes my walk in communion with God. The meal offering was the only offering without blood. However, it was only offered along with the burnt offering where there was blood. The meal offering represents my walk with God by his might and power and for his glory alone. And then finally, the peace offering. And this, of course, is where through the peace offering, I celebrate my communion with God. It symbolizes the completion of my union with God. Part of the offering has been returned to me. As I eat the remainder of the sacrifice along with the loaves, I'm symbolically feeding on God's divine nature He's coming into me, and I into him. I'm becoming one with God. And that's just what I always wanted, to know and share 
in his very own nature to become one with him. So, we summarize this then by saying it's only symbolism. It's not the real thing. The five offerings are not the real thing. But that's what the people under the old blood covenant had available to them. Now, these offerings pointed to the real thing, but it's not the real thing. The blood of bulls and goats can only cover your sins. It cannot take them away. It's only the promised seed, singular, of Abraham that can make you righteous and be a blessing to the whole world in the full, in the whole world. And in the fullness of time, God would send forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Galatians 4, verse 4. See, there's a timing for everything. When the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, who would pay the penalty for our sin and purchase our salvation with his own blood. Consequently, the law is fulfilled, and the Mosaic law does not exist under the new blood covenant. Now, Galatians 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those, uh, to, uh, to, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. All right. So when we pray, sometimes it seems like the prayer is not answered immediately, a lot of times. But you've got to understand there's a, there's a timing. It, timing is important. And for Jesus, there was no way he could come on this earth back then. He had, didn't have the, the law. He didn't have the Bible. And he needed the Bible to find out who he was and, and what he was sent into this world to do. And, uh, and so then, because he came into this world literally a human being in every respect, so he had to grow spiritually, he had to grow and mature physically, and even in the scriptures, and in Luke, and we'll get to that later, but it says that he had to grow in wisdom. Grow in wisdom. And so he started from scratch, just like you and I do. And literally, as a human being, when he was born into this world. And so then, he had to wait. And so he came, and when he came, there was the Torah. There was the old covenant in print. So he could actually then through the old blood covenant, Jesus would meditate on it because there was new blood, no new blood covenant when he walked on the earth. He had the old blood covenant. But in the old blood covenant, he was able to find out who he was and why he was here. That's the same for you and me. When we read the, the new blood covenant, we find out who we are in Christ and why we're here and what we're supposed to do. So it's exactly the same thing as it was when Jesus first came here on the earth. So that's amazing. So don't, don't give up in thanking God for the answers to your prayer because sometimes timing is important. There are certain situations or people he has to get in line and what have you in order to bring this to pass. So just continue to praise and thank him for the answer to prayer. Timing is everything. Praise the Lord. Well, again, you know, it, it, the time goes fast, but tomorrow or the next session, rather, we will actually start talking about the new blood covenant. And that's very exciting because that's where we live. But I just felt it was important that we did some of this background things that we've been doing for the last quite a few sessions now. But now we'll get into the new blood covenant and things will make a lot more sense. So I just thank you, everyone, for listening again today. And I thank you that you can. Uh, see this teaching in its entirety on the AFCM International YouTube channel. You can also get on the website of afcminternational.org and there you can download the faith aid with all kinds of scriptures for you to confess so you can faith can, faith can grow in God, order books and teaching materials and sow seed in this ministry if you desire. So thank you for listening and please join me again next time on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Meanwhile, be blessed. Looking forward to seeing you. By faith. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.